Okay, so I have one refined paint layer, right? Looks like that on its own. Obviously, I've focused more on some areas than other areas with my refined painting. So what I need to do is now bring this finish everywhere else. And I'm gonna go ahead and lock that layer and, and make a second refined paint layer. With digital painting, when you paint over something, if it's on the same layer, you're actually getting rid of as many pixels as you are adding. So sometimes you want to layer it up. And I'll go ahead and put this layer behind my locked one so that when I'm painting the back here, I'm trying to bring it up to the same finish. I don't accidentally undo some of the pixels I liked for the head. And then just like what seemed to work pretty well with the, um, the head, I'm gonna use that texture brush, just that grass brush, pretty simple, but work between two different colors. Let's look at its brush settings, right? So it scatters, it angles. I can even change that angle a little bit more maybe. Um, and then it has what's called color dynamics. So 100%, it's jittering between the foreground and background color. I can give it some saturation jitter, give it some brightness jitter. I can try that um, with no purity. <laughs> I'm going to let it jitter its opacity a little bit. It means it kind of fades in and out. And then maybe give it some texture as well. Yeah. Okay. So once you've set your brush, then you can play with its size and its opacity. I'm going to make it a little bit higher opacity. And I want to start with kind of mid-tones. Transition between highlights and shadows on the core of this leg. Luckily, I don't need to get into the details of the claws or anything. Then I'll be painting on top of this texture brush with my own brush at lower opacities and kind of bringing it all around. Just trying to bring consistency. There are lots of specialized brushes in Photoshop that you can get into if you like digital painting, like the mixing brush, which will pick up and automatically mix with a color from a layer underneath, instead of always having to choose your colors. You know, So if you're painting on top of a photograph, you can set the mixing brush, it's right here, to, to match a layer underneath.
There's just lots of, of little tricks that you can play with. But for an intro digital art class with digital painting, I just wanted you to see the basics of this technique before we um, have our final project, because this can be used on top of any other technique to refine it and uh, to troubleshoot, right? So say you were compositing a landscape and you just loved it, but you wanted a certain star in the sky in a certain place, you know, instead of having to composite it, you can just digitally paint that in. All right, so that's a lot of that in between texture. And this is a good opportunity where I can just try to blend it in as a whole. Because it's it's pretty pretty boring. It's just a texture brush, right? So it's just giving me kind of an overall texture on all these areas. Mixing between these mid-tone colors. And a little bit more back here. But now, think of the other ways we can digitally paint. You see how it all looks kind of middle gray now, and I've lost a lot of my tone. So what if I set that to an overlay mode? Do I lose it entirely? Not entirely, but I lose it mostly. What if I try pin light mode? Again, I lose it mostly. What if I try soft light? Again, lose it mostly. So what if I try just normal? That's too much. But what if I try darken? So that will only keep the darker strokes. Right? What if I try lighten? These are all layer styles. right? Blending modes. That will keep only the lighter strokes, which is not what I want. So how can I kind of get more variation into this? I could take the opacity down, but then that just makes it look kind of weak. So what if I use dodge and burn? So let's start with the darkening. So I can burn. I'm going to go back to my brush, but use it as a burn tool now. So now I'm switching from a paintbrush. Because remember, you can use these other tools. And now I can hit the mid-tones with the burn at 18 percent and I can keep the texture and now add the shadows. So that's why it's nice to have kind of a mid-tone texture brush because I can easily darken darken those with burn. You can do that a little bit on the head. So if you put in the work of putting in your brush strokes, you don't always have to get the exact right tone or color. You can always dodge and burn those brush strokes. So some of the advantages of digital. And this is part of the refined painting as well. Now often we overdo it. So I often do it on a duplicate layer and then, and then merge that in. Unlock. I can even dodge and burn that base painting layer. So I know it needs to go a little bit darker down here. Let's see, you know, what that does. By darkening that base painting layer, it's giving me those little holes underneath the refined that are getting darker now. That stuff. It's all pretty helpful.
So you know, back to the back. And then to the ear. That's where those kind of texture brushes can be nice. Okay. So now it's about kind of cleaning it up, finishing it up. So now with my refined paint layer, I can use my brush, not the texture brush. I can set its shape dynamics. and its texture. And what the heck, I'm going to add some color dynamics to it. Not too much. Make it smaller. Make it lower opacity. And then choose kind of an interesting foreground background color for it to mix between. A little bit on the bluish green side for some of these shadows. A little bit of that full spectrum. Knowing that I can burn them later to darken their value. And now I've unlocked all my painting layers. So I can work from the base painting on up. And I'm still not, I'm choosing not to erase, not using the eraser at all. I'm just painting over. But for that ear, I do need to erase. But I can just go to the base painting and just cut away, you know, with the lasso pretty strongly. Let's shape. with the lasso cut away pretty strongly to shape the ear. And then just paint from there. It's all about edges and value and texture and color. You decide what your approach is to it. Some of that red in there. And ultimately the layer on the very top is the one where you make all of your final little tweaks. Now you can go on forever. And you can zoom in and you can keep improving it. But at some point, we call it finished. And then you get to start playing with all this cool digital information you've created from scratch. Remember, we didn't composite anything into this. This was all just our pixels. Kind of purest digital painting. So now I might use dodge and burn a little bit. And then it's done. In the next video, I'll play with the color and with the abstract variations we can create from this pretty strong.